And this is part two of V growth initialized. And in this video, we will again calculate fk minus f0 when tick i lower is initialized and tick i upper is not initialized. Just a reminder that fk represents the fee growth inside at time k. So f0 will represent the fee growth inside at time t0. And for reminder, this is the equation that we will be using to calculate phi inside two ticks, i lower and i upper. Now this equation splits into three parts, whether the current tick IFC is less than tick i lower, if it's in between the two ticks, or if it's above the two ticks. So we'll be using these equations again. Okay, so let's start with the case of when the current tick IFC is less than tick i lower. Imagine the case where the current tick IFC is less than tick i lower, and in this case, tick i lower is already initialized, and tick i upper is not initialized. Since we're assuming that tick i lower was already initialized, we'll label this as fl. fl is equal to f out of tick i lower at time t0. And how about the phi growth? Well, let's imagine that the phi growth at time t0 is over here, fg0, and at time t1, it crossed over tick lower, and at time t2, it's in between tick i lower and tick i upper. Now, what we want to calculate is the phi growth inside these two ticks, il and iu, at time t2. So to begin with, we need to calculate the phi growth inside at time t0. So this is when the phi growth is over here at fg0. Now, to calculate phi growth inside at time t0, Remember that the current tick IFC right now is less than tick i lower. So you'll need to scroll up and then use this equation. So going back down, this is equal to f out of i lower minus f out of i upper. f out of i lower, since it's already been initialized, it is equal to fl. And f out of i upper, it's not initialized yet, so it is equal to 0. Okay, let's do the same for at time t2. At time t2, let's calculate phi growth inside. Now notice that at this point, the current tick will be in between tick i lower and i upper. Okay, so scrolling back up, we'll be using this equation. So this is equal to f of g2 minus f out of i lower minus f out of i upper. The first part, f g2, is simply equal to f g2. How about f out of i lower? Well, notice that now, at time t1, it crossed over. So we will need to apply the algorithm that updates f out of i lower. We do this by assigning f out of i lower to be f of g1 minus the previous f out of i lower, which is fl. So this will be the new f out of i lower. And f out of i upper remains the same, so it's still equal to 0. So this is f2. Okay, and to calculate the phi growth inside, we will need to do f2 minus f0. The first part, f2, is equal to fg2 minus f of g0 minus fl. This equation is simply this equation. And f0 is equal to fl. Okay, so let's simplify this equation. Well, notice that the minus fl over here and the minus minus fl over here cancels out. And we're simply left with fg2 minus fg1. Okay, does this equation make sense? Well, let's take a look at this graph. Looking at it visually, we expect the phi growth inside this position between IL and IU to be the difference in height between FG2 and FG1, or simply FG2 minus FG1, and which is equal to this equation over here. So this is the phi growth inside in this situation. Let's move on. Consider the case where the current tick IFC is in between tick I lower and I upper. And again, we're assuming that Lower tick is initialized and has the value fl, however, upper tick is not initialized, so it is equal to 0. At time t0, phi growth is over here. At time t1, the phi growth crosses over tick i upper. And at time t2, we want to calculate phi growth inside tick i lower and i upper. Again, we start by calculating f of 0. At time t0, we can see that the current tick is in between tick i lower and tick i upper. So the equation that we'll be using to calculate phi growth inside is this one. fg0 minus f out of i lower minus f out of i upper. The first part is simply equal to fg0. How about f out of i lower? Well, this is equal to fl. Okay, and how about f out of i upper? Well, since it's not initialized yet, it is equal to 0. So this is the equation for f0. Okay, let's do the same for f2. At time t2, we're going to calculate phi growth inside. 
At time t2, the current tick will be above tick i upper. So the equation that we'll be using is this one. Okay, so let's start by calculating f alpha by upper. Notice that at time t1, phi growth crossed over tick i upper. So f out of i upper will be equal to f of g1. How about f out of i lower? Well, since it has not changed, it is still equal to fl. So this is f2. And again, to get the phi growth inside i, l, and i, u, what we need to do is take f2 minus f0. This is equal to f g1 minus fl that we got from here, and then minus f g0 minus fl, which you get from here. Okay, we can simplify the equation. The fls cancel out, and we're left with f g1 minus f g0. And looking at the graph, we can double check that the phi growth inside is the difference between the height f g1 and f g0, which is equal to f g1 minus f g0. Okay, so let's move on to the last case when the current tick i of c is greater than tick i upper. So consider the case when the current tick i of c is above tick i upper. And again, the lower tick is initialized and has the value fl. And now when we initialize this position, we apply the rule that if the tick to be initialized is below the current phi growth, then we set this tick to be equal to the current phi growth. So at time t0, the phi growth will be at fg0, and since tick i upper is below this phi growth, we initialize this tick to be equal to fg0. And let's say that at time t1, the current phi growth crossed below tick i upper, and at time 2, it will be over here. And what we're going to do is, again, calculate the phi growth inside at time t2. At time t0, phi growth inside will be equal to this equation. f out of i upper will be initialized to fg0, and f out of i lower will be equal to fl. Okay, notice that at time t2, the current tick will be between tick i lower and tick i upper. Here's the equation that we'll need to apply. The first part is equal to fg2. How about f out of i lower? Well, f out of i lower has not changed, and it is still equal to fl. And how about f out of i upper? Well, notice that tick i upper was initialized as fg0, and at time t1, the current tick crossed below this tick. So we apply the algorithm that updates f out of i, and what we need to do is take fg1 minus the previous f out of i. The previous f out of i will be fg0, so we get fg1 minus fg0. This is f out of i upper. Okay, so now that we have these two values of f2 and f0, we can calculate f2 minus f0 to calculate the phi growth inside this position. f2 minus f0. f2 will be equal to this expression, and f0 will be equal to this expression. Now this is a long equation, but we can see that the fl cancels out with the minus minus fl, and the minus minus fg0 cancels out with minus fg0. So we're left with fg2 minus fg1. And we can double check, looking at this graph, that the phi growth inside is the difference between fg2 minus fg1. So this is the phi growth inside in this situation. So in this video, we calculated the phi growth inside when tick i lower is initialized and tick i upper is not initialized. In the next video, we'll do the opposite. We'll calculate phi growth inside when tick i lower is not initialized and i upper is initialized. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.